Yeah, All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Gene Pfeiffer, and I am really blessed to serve as the president at Bethany Lutheran College, which is the ELS uh, owned and operated college in Mankato, Minnesota. <laughs> Anybody from Minnesota? North Dakota. Love, you know what it's like, a lovely place. All right. So, <laughs> Would you like to join us, or you got other things yeah, to do? Yeah, I think we're, I don't know if we're blocking. Oh, just get on there. Oh, this is, here. This yeah. is for young people. <laughs> Thanks, I'm just like, I don't want to be. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought if I said right here, I'd be blocking her, and I'm like, uh, There's more than we do. Everybody <laughs> should have uh, two handouts. If you don't, then you don't have all your homework. So, then we don't have, yeah. So good to, it's good to be here. Um, this is not my first time to Salt Lake. I was here back in the 90s. That's a long time ago. Hey, so, that's when I was born. Oh, well. Well, yeah, that kind of ages me. So uh, anyway, uh, my there. privilege to be here. Yeah, so what I'd like to give you today is an update on our Simmons uh, College. And uh, this will equip you with all the knowledge you need to uh, be able to pray for Bethany, to be able to tell stories about all the great things going on at Bethany. And uh, so I'm excited to be able to be here to, to, to do that. This is my eighth year as the president at Bethany. Prior to that, I was the president of a Lutheran high school in the Twin Cities. Before that, I was a professor of education at Martin Luther College in New Orleans, Minnesota, where they train um, undergrad pastors and teachers for the Wisconsin Synod. And before that, I was a uh, Lutheran elementary school teacher and principal wow. for 12 years before that. Wow. So you don't look that old. You know what it means? <laughs> it means I'm really old. Yeah. Yeah. So, so thanks for reminding me. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, pleased to give you this update about Bethany. So, has anybody been to Bethany? We've had two I people. Attended. I went for the Senate meeting. Good. So you you went there for a Senate convention. Okay. And you were once at. I Bethany? went with him. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so wonderful. Um, so most of you have not been there. So I'll tell you a little bit about uh, this beautiful. 50-acre campus um, in Mankato. Um, a lot of you know that the ELS headquarters is in Mankato, and it's on the Bethany campus. So there's a road right here, and the Synod Seminary and College are, are the Synod um, office and the seminary are right about here. So um, anyway. The college started in 1911, it was a ladies college, and um, it had this one building. So from 1911, all of this happened. We, we say that Bethany started though in 1927, because that's when our ELS purchased the college. Uh, purchased it for more money than, than the Senate even had, um, so that by a leap of faith they went ahead and got it. And there's plenty of spots. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> Give you your homework assignment. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach him to miss a week. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, later on in the presentation, I'm going to talk about a new construction that's going on, and that is in this empty patch of uh, land right here. And right next to it, I'll mention uh, this is a new uh, turf soccer field uh, stadium that we built. This big thing back here, that is Mayo Hospital. You've heard of Mayo in Rochester. So that is the headquarters of the largest campus for Mayo. Mankato is the second largest campus uh, for Mayo, and it keeps expanding as well. All right. So what you're going to hear in the presentation is how the Lord uh, continues to abundantly bless Bethany, someone was just asking before, how is the college doing? We've had our three highest enrollments in the last three years. Crazy, huh? So I got a theory on that that we might be able to talk about. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why I believe God is blessing Bethany. 
And it, uh, to me, it really comes down to um, a lot of colleges that started out as Christian colleges over time have kind of lost their way, all right? At Bethany, we stay very focused on what our purpose was two or 200 years, 100 years ago. So we're almost 100 years old. And we say we have a, a, a twofold Mary Martha purpose. So the college is called Bethany because it started out as this ladies' college in 1911, and they wanted to give these young women a twofold Mary and Martha education. Those are the two sisters in the town of Bethany, and Mary was very focused on hearing Jesus' words, so to hear God's word, to be trained in it, and Martha was more concerned about uh, the other stuff. So, um, so the original school, Bethany for Ladies, had a Mary and Martha purpose, a place where, where girls could learn about God and his word, and a place where they could be trained for useful vocations in society. And in 1911, folks, do you know what that useful vocation in society was? Homemaking. So, home ec. So it was a, uh, a Bible school and, uh, and a school for training uh, young women and to become pastor's wives. Okay? <laughs> So uh, we still carry out that purpose today. So our primary purpose is to engage our students with Jesus. And then secondly, to equip them for a variety of vocations in society. On the back of this sheet is a listing of all of the majors that we offer at Bethany. So it's like about 29 or so today. So whoops, that's up to now. So whatever you want to get into, you can come to Bethany and get an undergraduate degree in that field um, through our training. And then we also, um, in addition to the seminary, we also now have a master's program in Christian uh, clinical mental health counseling. So a counseling master's program as well. So anyway, uh, we continue to be focused on our mission. And um, at Bethany, what I think you'll hear is that the gospel, it's all about the gospel. So we're not ashamed of the gospel. It's, it's the lifeblood of what we do at Bethany. And that's what Romans 1.16 says. And then our job is to get the word out to engage students and people with Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit takes care of the rest. So in uh, Isaiah 55, there we're told, my word will not return empty. It's going to accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. And of course, that purpose is the saving of lives for eternity. So that's what we do at Bethany. I'm going to talk a little bit about the kinds of students that we have at Bethany. They're, they really come in three flavors. So we have some students who come to Bethany, like Pastor Paul, who uh, wanted to go on to study to be a pastor. So uh, Paul and his wife, Marta, are both graduates of Bethany Lutheran College. I don't think Marta aspired to be a teacher, from what I understand. I think her major was music, is what, what I heard. Paul told me he was a history major, but he definitely then wanted to go on to the seminary. So, uh, so some of our students come to Bethany because they want to become future pastors. This is Patrick Ernst, who you see graduated a couple years uh, after Paul, and today he's a pastor in Frankenmuth, Michigan. Some of our students come to Bethany because they want to be teachers. So here you see a couple of them, and these two, uh, one teaches in Washington and one is in Florida. And so we have about 60 students at Bethany who are education majors. And uh, many of them aspire to go on to teach in Lutheran schools across the U.S. However, we can't just have a school to train ELS students to become pastors and teachers. Are you aware of this? So the red line are baptisms in the ELS since 2000. So in 2000, there were 450 baptisms in our church body. A couple years ago, we were down to under 200. So our number of young people are drastically shrinking. 
This is confirmation rate, a little over 300 in 2000, and today it's about 150. So, how about here? Do you have a lot of young people here at? So that what I see when I go around speaking at churches is that I, I see a lot of uh, love us. Yeah. And uh, not a lot of the youngers. So, um, so at Bethany, we have to have more students than what we can provide in the ELS to run a college. It takes a lot of students uh, to, run, to really run a thriving college. So we also reach out to many other kinds of students to engage them with Jesus and equip them for useful locations in society. So at Bethany, we take a great commission approach to enrollment. The Great Commission, you know what that is? Go and teach all nations, yeah? So that's, that's how we do it at Bethany, and it works very well. So we want to enroll as many students in the ELS and the Wisconsin Senate and Missouri Senate as possible. But we need more. So we carry out the Great Commission. So we try to engage as many students with Jesus as, as we possibly can and roll at Bethany. And we have many safeguards in place to ensure that we never lose our way. So for example, our Board of Regents, all EOS. Um, I'm EOS. My entire cabinet is EOS. All of our faculty are either members of the EOS or the Wisconsin Senate. And we have 48 full-time faculty. Actually, 45 are members uh, in our fellowship, and there are three other very developed Christians in our faculty. 80% um, of our staff are members of our fellowship. So we try to really focus on employing people who are like us, get us, share the same faith as us. And then we also, all of our students take five classes in religion in their curriculum at Bethany. And we have chapel every day. So there's just many ways that we ensure um, that we never stray from our purpose at Bethany. And an example in a 2019 survey, on a scale of four high, one low, 95% of the students said that Bethany has helped them grow in their faith. So that's, that's what we want to see. Any questions so far? So we enroll a lot of other kinds of students at Bethany. So one of the different groups of students we have at Bethany is this uh, group of students that we recruit out of urban Minneapolis, St. Paul, in Milwaukee. And so we, we look for students that are highly academic, so they could be successful in college, but they quite frankly, financially, don't have the ability to get a college education. So we scholarship about six of these students a year, competitive scholarships, so that they can come to Bethany, so that we can engage them with Jesus, and then equip them to go back to their home cities and become future Christian leaders in their community. Yay. Yeah, we also have a large international program at Bethany. Today, 20% of our student body is international. So we have kids from 31 countries and six continents at Bethany. Now, did you know there are seven continents? You pretty sure of that? Okay, I am too. So we have students from six continents. Can you imagine that? The only place we don't have students from Antarctica. And there's a reason for that. We have high academic standards at Bethany. We don't enroll penguins. Okay? <laughs> we do draw the line, okay? So had we, if we would enroll penguins, we could save you uh, students from Southern Canada, but we don't, only six. So then this is, uh, we bring them to school uh, right away at the beginning of August. School starts in later August. And we give them an indoctrination into culture in America, what is it like to go to school in America, help and get them all set up to be successful here in the US. So this is the group that started last August. And so here's what's happening. So we have all these different kinds of students coming to Bethany, and then they're learning about Jesus. So here's a couple testimonials from students who came to Bethany not really knowing 
about the gospel. And here's what they're, what they're saying. So the top one said, I learned more in one year about religion than I had in my whole life. I am sure this learning will continue to grow as I continue to attend religious classes in a Christian college. The second student said, going into religion, so they're all required as freshmen to take a religion class, both their first and second semester of that. And it's Bible basics. It's like, what is the Bible? Who is you know, Jesus? All that kind of stuff. So this one said, going into religion, I had almost no idea what this Christianity was. But through my religion class, my faith is much stronger, and I'm grateful for that. This is, you can see myself with one of our graduates. This uh, is uh, uh, Ariel, and he is from the Congo. And that's his mom and dad behind him. So he graduated a couple years ago with a degree in engineering. And at the end of the graduation ceremony, he said, my mom and dad want to give you something. And so what uh, they wanted to present uh, to me, they had an artist back in the Congo uh, uh, put together this painting. And it kind of represents what uh, the education of Bethany as parents meant to them. So you see, do you see kind of a Martin Luther looking uh, African man there? So you see him uh, reading the catechism or Bible to a young Congolese student, and then you see mom and dad lurking off back in the bushes. So the point is that this uh, set of parents from the Congo, and they didn't speak English by the way, so all my communication was through the graduate. So they've been trusted to Bethany the Christian education of their son. So today he's a he's an engineering student, and that painting is right outside of my office. That is so cool. It really is, yeah. isn't it? And so that's what we do at Bethany. And so we get the opportunity to uh, to engage a lot of students to know their Savior Jesus Christ. And then what ends up happening at Bethany are weird things like kids getting baptized. <laughs> so. Uh, Trying to think of what her name is. Uh, I lost it. But she came to Bethany because she's tall. She's six foot one. Mm -hmm. So she came to Bethany because she was recruited to be in our women's basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 17 sports at Bethany, very successful teams. And um, so what happened when she came to Bethany? She played basketball but surrounded by Christian teammates, Christian coaches, going to a Christian college, Christian classes. By the end of her freshman year, she said, how do I get baptized? I'd love to be baptized. <clears throat> so on an afternoon, um, towards the end of her freshman year, her teammates all around her, she got baptized. Aww. That happens every year at Bethany. We have you know, a handful of kids a year getting baptized. They didn't come to college to learn about Jesus. They came for an education, but they came here and they got engaged with Jesus. That's a pretty cool thing that your college is doing. We also started um, what we would call adult information class. So they have to take some religion classes, but some kids are saying, you know, I really like the doctrine that you're teaching here at Bethany. How do I become a member of one of these churches? So this is our campus pastor, Don Molstead. And this was a couple of years ago. You can see there are some students uh, Zooming. You know, they're taking the class on Zoom. Some are in person, some are on the, on the screen. And he is teaching a 10-week um, adult instruction class. How about a college kid? How about a Tuesday night class? Hour and a half. 10 <coughs> Tuesdays in a row. How about it? Not for credit, not for a grade. Just come, because you want to become a member of one of our churches. So we have had 10 kids a year taking adult instruction class. And then what happens is they go on and they become confirmed members of one of our churches. And then we match them up to wherever they're going to be living and wherever their hometowns are. So that's pretty cool, too. So this student is actually from China. And uh, that is his, uh, he joined Mount Olive right in Mankato, and that is the pastor at Mount Olive in Birmingham. That was in our chapel just back in January. So pretty cool. 
Another example, this is Anthony in the plaid. He came to Bethany because he wanted to study engineering. And so he was very successful. He graduated in 2020. Today he has a job as an engineer. And he grew up Catholic, sort of Catholic, but not really engaged in that. And through Bethany, ended up joining one of our churches again, Mount Dalo, Friday night. So that's the kind of stuff that's happening at your uh, ELS college. So at Bethany, I like to say, we'll provide students the experiences that they want in college, whether it's a certain major, a certain activity they want to be involved in, you know, whatever it might be. And you're going to hear about a few of these activities that we do. So we'll give you the experiences in higher ed that you want, so we can give you what you truly need. And a lot of them come to Bethany, and they don't even know that they need Jesus. But they come to Bethany and they find out about him. The 1 Corinthians 9 passage, Paul says, I will be all things to all people so that by all possible means some might be saved. And that's what, that's what we're doing at Bethany. That's the best kind of bait and switch I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tell them up front that we're a Christian college. <laughs> but to, you know what that means to some people? Oh, good. Uh, you're, you're safe. You're a safe college. You guys don't carry uh, guns or do drugs or whatever, maybe, huh? Mm -hmm. so, so what Christian means to a lot of people that don't know Jesus is it's safety, you're friendly, that type of thing. So it's not quite big. <laughs> and they come knowing they have to take religion classes if they're going to be yeah. a student. But I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> So, and then I ask myself every day this question, if I'm on church and I'm a young person, where in society am I going to hear about Jesus? You going to hear about it on TV? Newspaper? Social media? Nowhere. So these students stumble upon Bethany, and, and it's really uh, the Holy Spirit's engagement. So I think you would agree with me that at Bethany, we really do value the soul of each and every one of our students. This is another one that you can see I baptized a couple years ago. All right, a couple updates. So we do more than just teach about Jesus at Bethany, very important to us, but we do other things too. We want to give students a really good education. So big picture, how is Bethany doing? That's our mascot, by the way, his name is Halbar. Uh, so we're the Vikings, and uh, so that's our mascot. Highest enrollment each of the last three years. This last year, 830-some uh, full and part-time students. I mentioned about the international students. Our customers come back, so high retention. That's a big deal. You keep your freshmen coming. You hope they come back again for their second and third and fourth years. And we've added a lot of new programs. So we're adding programs that people in society are really looking for. And it's a way, if you want to say the bait and switch, we'll... Come to Bethany, we'll give you computer science, engineering, whatever it is, nursing. And you come, and then we'll also engage you with Jesus. We also are, um, and we're a good school, we're ranked. You've heard of the rankings, uh, U.S. News and World Report. So we're ranked in the top ten of the nation among uh, liberal arts uh, colleges for social mobility. So what is that? Social mobility. It's, help, it's helping students to move up the social economic ladder. So if you take a federal student loan, they track you. Mm -hmm. The government tracks you. We all know that, right? Mm -hmm. And so they look at your incoming ACT score and your kind of your family uh, economic profile. And what they notice is after students graduate, you know, they move up. So we're 10 in the nation on helping kids move up. I mentioned that we started a, a clinical mental health counseling program, so that's a really big deal in society today. We have our first graduates this May. So I think we're graduating six or seven of uh, the first cohort, and uh, I can already say for next fall, we've got 25 new ones starting. So it's really taken off well, about 50 full-time adults in that program. Now it's all online. So if any of you want to get into a second career and become a counselor, you can do it right here from Salt Lake City. What do you think? What do you think? You want to sign up? Are you talking about like post-secondary? Yeah. Yeah. 
post grad, like graduate level? This is graduate program. So talk to me afterwards. Uh, I can get you connected with Dr. Ben. And so we're an accredited program that would lead you to become a professional counselor. In what? Uh, Counseling for with the brain, you know, psychology. So, yeah, so mental health counseling, so depression, things like that. And then we may get into other things like uh, marriage and family and other things like that, but okay. So you would be qualified to go out and be a counselor in a clinic somewhere, okay? So if you're interested, uh, let me know, okay. and I can, I can introduce you to this guy. And again, all online. Uh, these are some of the students. They do come back uh, for a weekend, a year, uh, and that's where they meet each other and they get some intense counseling. They even do some like training on some specialized counseling techniques. So we have a classroom with a two-way mirror. You see peers are critiquing the counseling session and then on the other side of the two-way mirror, a student is practicing a counseling session. We also have a really good education program that I mentioned earlier. Um, we have something at Bethany called the Brown Literacy Clinic. This is Dr. Polly Brown. She passed away from cancer a few years ago. But a large group of people got together, endowed a chair of education in her memory, and she was a reading teacher. So, um, so at Bethany, we got involved in something where we teach teachers how to teach reading through something called the science of reading. It's a research-based approach to reading. And today, Bethany is known as one of the top colleges you can go to to learn how to teach reading the right way. How about that? And then we give back to the community. So we are now giving this science of reading training to teachers. To, so the Mankato School District is coming to Bethany like 49 of their teachers are coming and taking twice a month training on how to teach this way um, in the Mankato Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, our students are providing free literacy uh, reading instruction to children. Uh, this summer we'll have 40 children in a reading program where they're learning. Uh, if they struggle at reading, obviously reading is so important. So uh, we're doing that. And that's a give back, that's free. Legal studies is a big program at Bethany, so these are people that want to then go on to get into uh, graduate school to become an attorney. We have a mock trial team at Bethany that does really well, so we have legal studies, criminal justice, we have a paralegal certificate program, and then this mock trial team, it's a club, they go out and compete against other uh, colleges, and we did really well. We ended up uh, getting knocked out in the national tournament only to the University of Chicago Law School, who was the runner-up in the nation, to Harvard. So mm -hmm. that tells you that the Bethany mock trial team uh, was really good this year. And then something else about Bethany that is quite famous in our area is that we are really big in uh, media arts like filmmaking and also mm -hmm. broadcasting. So at Bethany, we have a big broadcasting studio that you see right here. And then we do the production, the, all the video camera work for Minnesota State Mankato Division I Hockey. So they were the runner up in the nation a year ago. So down at the arena in Mankato, this is the Bethany team, a lot of students. They're getting paid work study, you know, 15 bucks an hour to run cameras and things like that down at the arena. And then the feed goes back to our campus where the brains are, and this is where they're controlling uh, slow motion, uh, instant replay, you know, graphics, all that kind of stuff. And then the feed is getting picked up by like ESPN and Fox Sports and stuff like that. So we have graduates of this program that then go off to Fox and uh, ESPN every year. That's pretty cool. For little old Bethany, right? And then uh, Media Arts Awards. So you see uh, five of the five students holding these things called Crystal Pillars. These are college Emmy Awards. You've heard of the Emmys? So there's a college version of that. And then so our students, either for things like short film, graphic design, you know, all kinds of video stuff, video editing, are winning awards, uh, Emmy Awards. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, we also have an esports team at Bethany. Are you familiar with what esports is? Esports? Anybody? Esports? What is that? It's like video games. Video games. Oh, we have a video game team at Bethany. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what do you think? My little grandson wants to be a video. Come to Bethany. Player. So come to Bethany. You can do this. <laughs> And we're really good at it. <laughs> so for the last three years, we've you've heard about basketball. They have the big dance, the big tournament, NCAA tournament. They have one of these for, uh, it's called League of Legends. It's a video game. So oh, there's 400-some countries around the country that participate. And um, for the last three years, Bethany has made it to the national tournament. It's all one division. So in our conference is Michigan State, Ohio State, Kansas, Illinois. It's like, really? And Bethany. But that's just an extra curriculum. Yes. Right? Okay. Although some kids turn pro after the season. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. yeah. So we had two kids that uh, dropped out of Bethany after the season. So uh, two years ago, we made it to the final four. So pretty crazy. Really? Yeah, final four in the nation for, for video games. And then at the end of the season, two kids moved to LA and are on a professional gaming team. So do they, do they make the games? No, the games are made by Riot or whoever. And uh, they play, and their full-time job is to play games. What? And they're paid by the company. They're for paid by the, the company, yeah. I went out there to check it out, and sure enough, they have arenas where these people are playing, and they're making about 50 grand a year. But their moms told me, don't worry, if they get cut or bomb out, they'll be back in school next year. <laughs> I think the life of a video gamer is pretty short now. <laughs> By 22, you're dead. You're, you're <laughs> So this is us. Uh, we then get invited to these big tournaments. So this is us at a turn, one of these tournaments. So yeah, we're this is one of our things. Come to Bethany, play video games, and you can learn about Jesus. And they could learn to make video games, and they could do like David and yeah. Goliath yes. and all the Bible stories. So we have a computer science major, and so you can learn about programming. Okay. And a lot of them want to be want to someday make video games. That is correct. Uh, we also started the clay target team. So you want to come to Bethany and shoot? My, and I'm supposed to say shoot or guns, I think. We, uh, something about firearms. So we have pigeons that you shoot. So we have a home no. course, if you want to call it. And <laughs> it's a co-ed. And uh, we got about 20 kids. Why'd you come to Bethany? Well, because I want to be on your clay target team. <laughs> I mean, be all things to all people so that they can learn about Jesus, right? So lots of majors, lots of activities at Bethany. Um, moving on to other stuff now. Um, support to Bethany is really good. So last year wow. we were uh, building something, so we got a lot more money than a typical year. But you see in total about $7 million came into Bethany, uh, about a million and a half for um, scholarships. ELS support, our synod support to Bethany has been pretty good as well. It takes a lot of money to run a college. So right now we have a campaign or a new uh, facility project going on. We're trying to uh, improve indoor activity space because we're in Minnesota. We have long <laughs> winters in Minnesota. So you need a place to run around in a recreation from November to May, okay? So uh, the need was strong. We really identified we need indoor space just for recreation, for fitness, indoor practice space, all that kind of stuff. And so we came up with a big plan. First, we had to create space on campus, so we moved our baseball team to the minor league park in Mankato. So we got this great facility that we can brand. This is it. It's called ISG Field. It's got a jumbled trend scoreboard. So it's a pretty cool place, and this is where we play. Division three baseball. So we have, and we're in first place right now. So we have 50 some baseball players. You don't need 50 baseball players. You only need nine. So we have 50. Well, why do you want to come to Bethany? Because I get to play here, right? This is wow. a cool place to play. So that was phase one. We had to make space on campus, move the baseball team off campus. It's only 10 blocks. Then where the baseball field was, we moved our, um, our soccer, uh, 
facilities. So we have uh, men's and women's uh, soccer, about 40 players on each, uh, each team. And again, they're both pretty good too. And so we built this really great facility for them. Uh, turf field, one of the best in the state. And uh, there you see. And then where the soccer field used to be is where we're now, we, uh, it opens Monday, tomorrow, uh, this facility. So the white roof structure is a big activity center or field house, indoor 200 meter track, turf infield. And then the uh, building in front of it is like a fitness center, lounge, that kind of thing. So you can see it in construction going up behind the soccer field. And uh, oh, this is like is. last week, no, I don't. So we, <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost, yeah. yeah. So here's the front of that uh, building. So when you walk in the building, go to the right, just this huge hangout space. So just a space for students to study with their friends and just visit. Uh, and then you see big windows that mirror back to campus. And the furniture starting to come in. It's looking really nice. Opens tomorrow. And then on the you walk in the door, go to the left, you have a big fitness center. And you can see now how that's getting equipped. Again, opens tomorrow. Wow. So the students are really excited uh, to get in there. So great place for uh, fitness and recreation. And then if you walk straight down the hallway to, in the building, you come to this. So where you see cement today, that is a rubber track. And then the, the green, that is a, a turf infield. So a place for baseball practice, softball practice, soccer, play football, you know, ultimate frisbee, whatever you want to do in there. And then it has drop down netting, so you have stuff in the inside and other things on the outside. Underneath these big, uh, these lids, they, they come off, and that's where the launch of the pits are, where sand is underneath that. So today, all of that now is covered, and the lines are in, and it opens tomorrow. So kids are really excited. So you can see the lines for infield practice for softball, baseball. Does the president have to be at school tomorrow? I need to be back tonight, yes. <laughs> yeah. So we're excited about opening this tomorrow. That roof has a good snow bearing. Uh, yeah. So the, company, <laughs> the company that builds this is based in Minnesota. Oh. So, and that's a vinyl roof. Oh, wow. Yeah, supported by yeah. steel. And then new locker rooms for the men and the women. And so here's where we're at. It's a 16 and some million dollar project. Yikes. Very expensive. And we've raised over 14 so far. So we continue to fundraise uh, for the project. And like I said, it opens on mm -hmm. So I'm almost done. I want to talk for just a few minutes about some challenges that we face at Bethany. It's not just blessings. There are some. There are some challenges. We have some challenges from society. We have some financial challenges, and we want more of our ELS students to come to Bethany. So one of the uh, problems that we're facing is just from the state of Minnesota. They are passing some laws for teachers that says that they have to embrace the LGBTQ stuff. Yeah. Obviously, we don't want to do that. So we're trying to figure out how we can continue to run a teacher education program without compromising our scriptural principles. I think we can figure it out, but um, it is a challenge. Uh, maybe you've heard in the newspaper that a lot of people don't think college is worth it today. That's another challenge for us. So people say, who needs to go to college? I can get a good job without college. Not true. It is a research statistic that for every degree post high school you get, on average, pay goes up over a lifetime. So if you have an associate's degree, you'll make more than a high school diploma, bachelor's degree, master's, etc. So, but uh, we have to fight that perception. Now at Bethany, we would say we provide a great value, and besides all that other stuff I've already told you about, you know, we provide the antidote to the to our biggest problem, right? Our problem of sin. So that's a great value right there. But Bethany is also very affordable. So whenever you check out colleges, there's the sticker price, and then there's the real price. So this is what our sticker price is at Bethany, which is not that bad compared to other private colleges. And then here's what people actually pay on average. 
And you can see that that's actually, that's room board tuition fees, that's really quite affordable. So we would say we provide a great value. So keep that in mind, that's what the average student pays, but that means we do have a problem. The problem is we can't pay our bills. We can't pay our bills. So we're trying to be so affordable to our families and what we charge that we're running short of the money it takes to run the college. So last year, or last year we had a deficit. This year I think we're gonna have a bigger deficit. So our expenses exceed our income. That is a problem. So here on average is what the average student is paying at Bethany, and what you notice is it's been going down. Because we're trying to be affordable. Mm -hmm. What you also might notice is that ELS students pay about $2,000 less than non-ELS students. So again, we're trying to encourage our ELS students to come. That extra $2,000 that we give them in a scholarship, there's no money behind it. It's just, oh, you're ELS. Here, have another $2,000 off your bill. So... What we're trying to do are to ask our congregations and our people if they would like to help support ELS scholarships. So we have a program called Roots of the Vine, and it's just, it's people like yourselves, congregations of our city, who might say, you know what, we can put in our budget a $2,000 scholarship to help an ELS student. Or maybe you can do two of them. Maybe you can only do a half of a scholarship, or a quarter of a scholarship, or an eighth of a scholarship. But it's all, it's all really helpful. So what we're asking, and the reason I'm going around to congregations is I'm, I'm asking for our members to pray for their college, to pray for that thing. So I uh, would love to see you pray for your college, talk about all the great things going on at Bethany, and then finally consider either through your congregation or as an individual to consider giving a gift to Bethany to help support ELS scholarships. So that's what I got to say. And I want to thank you for listening and for your prayers and support. Yes. I have, I was wondering how big is your nursing program? Uh, it is about 50 students. Because that's a good way to grow a program is in nursing, and you're right next to the Mayo Clinic, so is that where they do their clinicals? Yes, uh, they have to do a bunch of clinicals in lots of settings. They have to do an urban clinical, uh, they do a acute clinical at Mayo, they have to be in a nursing home for a clinical, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm a nurse, I know that. Okay. okay that's okay. <laughs> no, 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 I was just wondering because nursing, you know, they're in big need now. Yes. And that's a good, do you yeah. do uh, a, a master's program? Not yet. Okay. We were looking at it, but haven't started it yet. Okay. So the biggest challenge with nursing, you know, it's a hard program. A lot of kids want to come and study nursing, and then they realize how hard the science is, and then they don't make it. What's hard about it? Is it the statistics of the science, the research of um, the science? The biology, the chemistry, just the science you have to know. Nurses today have to know what doctors had to know 20, 30 yeah. years ago. Wow. So it, it's just, it's, it's very academically hard. Okay. And, and you can't make mistakes because you're talking about people's lives. So they have all these hands-on uh, labs they have to be able to do. So then how many credits a semester do these guys take when uh, their classes are a little bit more? About 16 credits a semester. Wow. Is that a lot or a little? For, a cl for classes <laughs> that sound that difficult, that's a lot. Okay, yeah. So uh, our four-year graduation rate, the the, the the kids walking across the stage getting a diploma from me in a couple weeks, 80% are finishing in four years or fewer. Wow. So wow. we're also trying to help them to get out on time so they don't have to pay a lot in tuition. Yeah. So they're, yeah, they, it's academically, you can slow it down, but a lot of them are getting done quickly. Was there another hand up? Yes. How much does, uh, yeah. With federal and state grants, do strings come attached to it? And um, spend, you have to teach CRT, you have to teach, um, or? Yeah, not really. 
So far, not really. The biggest pressure I'm getting is, again, in your teacher education program, if you want to license your teachers, um, you got to, well, and we're trying to figure out what does that mean you got to affirm LGBTQ. Does it mean you have to believe it, or you have to affirm that these people really exist in classrooms? So if it's the latter, we certainly, as Christians, want to give all students a fair opportunity to learn. So we get that we have to teach about it, but don't <coughs> ask us to believe it. So that's the, that's the, we're debating with the state higher education office about that. And we hope, it, it goes into effect in 2025, we're hoping that we will be able to continue to do it. But uh, for federal grant and state grant, that money uh, goes to the family and then they can choose to take their grant money wherever they want. So if they choose to enroll in a private college, a Christian college, that's no strings attached so far. So far. So yeah. far. Oh. Yeah. Was it moved further yeah. to the left? Correct. Yeah. All right. Um, church starts, I think, in 10, 11 minutes. Yeah. So why don't we close with the prayer and then I'll let you be uh, on your way. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of Christian education. We know that uh, we as Christians need to continue to grow in our knowledge of you so that our faith may continue to stand firm, even against the assaults that we face. We also know this is especially true for our young people. So continue to give us uh, Christian schools and Sunday schools and a Christian college where our young people may know about you, their Lord and Savior, and it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very